Justice comes into this world and he does something absolutely astounding. You know that there are quite a number of occasions in which Jesus ministers to people with leprosy and other skin diseases. We find one of those stories in Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. This person comes walking through the streets and he's doing unclean, unclean, right? He, you know, people make way, he's an outcast, but he's finding his way towards Jesus. And then he, and Jesus touches this person. But you know what happened that must have just astonished everyone? Jesus didn't become unclean. Or pardon me, the, 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 yeah, Jesus didn't become unclean. What happened is the sick, leprous man became clean. No one would have ever expected that. Jesus should have become unclean. But instead, the, the flow, if you will, goes the other way. Jesus reverses the, the tide. Suddenly, the cleanness is flowing from Jesus to the sick person. Jesus is showing something remarkable. He's showing that, that true cleanness flows from him to us. He's showing that in a ritual sort of way, but he's showing a deeper principle as well. He's showing that not just ritual purity flows from the clean to the unclean to make them clean. He's showing that moral cleanness, moral perfection, moral purity flows from the one who is truly clean to those who are unclean. In other words, Jesus is showing in his actions, I have come to make you truly clean. I've come to give you clean hearts. I've come to bring you renewal. I've come to transform you. Now, you remember I said that cleanness can only come through sacrifice. And you see where I'm going with this, right? What's the sacrifice that Jesus came to bring? It wasn't an ox. It wasn't a lamb. It wasn't a bird or anything else. It was himself. See, Jesus shows that true cleanness would come indeed through sacrifice, but that sacrifice would be himself. He came to make us clean by giving us his perfection, his holiness, his purity, and by offering himself on our behalf. And how did Jesus do that? He became, uh, he experienced the ultimate uncleanness. See, in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, the most unclean thing that you could have was a, was a dead body, a dead body corpse of any kind, whether it was an animal or a person. That had the most power to contaminate a clean person. You had to take the most care around a dead body because a dead body was the most unclean thing. And do you see what Jesus did? He took on the ultimate uncleanness. He took on cleanness. He took on himself uncleanness in its, in its most powerful form. He became unclean all the way to death. He experienced that so, so that we never will. The, the, the uncleanness of death will ultimately never destroy us because Jesus took it on himself. Jesus took it on himself to make us holy, to make us clean. That's who we are. You see? That's why we say holiness has to be received before it can be practiced. We receive by faith the holiness of Jesus. That comes to us. And in God's sight, we now are holy. So holy living is not about a checklist of rules that we have to keep, but it's This is who we are. We're living out our new identity as holy people. There's a story told about a, a young lawyer who had just graduated from law school, and he was really a well-respected, he did really well as a student, was you know top of his class kind of thing, and then he got a job with a, a, a law firm that was really prestigious, a really highly respected law firm. And he starts to try these these cases, and you know he starts to do his work on behalf of the law firm, and like the first three or four cases that he was trying, he was, you know, people had high expectations and, and he lost every one of them. And with each time that he lost a case, he began to get more frantic and more anxious. And, and then in turn, that made him more likely to lose the next case because he was just trying to prove himself all the time. And finally, one of the senior partners took him aside and said, listen, you're one of us now. You're, you're part of us. That's not going to change. And suddenly it, kind of clicked with this young lawyer. He, he realized he didn't have to try to prove himself every time. He, he, just, he just had to be who he was. He was a successful law student. He, he could do this. He just needed that reassurance. And then the behavior followed. Do you see the parallel for us? God says to us, you are holy. I've made you holy. I've made you holy in Jesus. Now, I want you to live that out. I want you to put that into practice in every area of your life. I want you to think through holiness in your homes, in your family, in your work, 